Hello and welcome to I Watched It With My Wife. This is the podcast where I, Jeremy, and my wife, Sarah, watch movies and review them. Uh, this week, we watched the sequel to the DC Comics film Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 1984 on uh, HBO Max. So, Sarah, what did you think of Wonder Woman 1984? Uh, that was a sequel. I thought it was the same exact movie, just set in a different time. Literally, the plot was the exact same. Tell me it wasn't. Tell me it wasn't. Tell me it wasn't. The guy had to die to literally to literally save humanity. She had to let her boyfriend die. In both movies, same thing. Same? Yes. Tell me it wasn't. I, it was not good. I was disappointed. It, it broke my heart. I it, liked the first one, and the second one just broke my heart. It's not the exact same plot, but there are... It does it's almost the exact same plot. No, but it does recycle elements like that. Um, yeah, Wonder Woman is, in my opinion, the best of the DC, uh, comic book movies, uh, for the DCEU. I'm not including the old Superman or Batman, and it's just for the DCEU. The Wonder Woman is the best in that group. Wonder Woman 1984 is not the worst in that group, but it is bad. It is a bad sequel. It is boring. It, it was it, too long. It was too long. It, it crammed... I don't like it when they do this, when they cram two villains in and they take away from one of them. Cheetah deserves a lot more screen time than she got. We were almost two thirds of the way through the movie before Kristen Wiig became villainous, much less became Cheetah because she didn't become Cheetah till like the last 20 minutes. It was, ugh. And then they had Pedro Pascal. I loved him in Game of Thrones. I loved him. I love him in The Mandalorian. He's Mando. Come on. He did a pretty good job as Maxwell Lord, but I feel like if they'd have put, instead of trying to shoehorn Maxwell Lord and Cheetah both in there and just let Maxwell Lord be the villain this time, says he could have done a far better job. And uh, too much recycling, too much, it's bad. It's just bad. It's, it's everything that the DCEU is known for. Great concepts, terrible execution. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I really feel like, I feel like there was a lot of backstory to this one that wasn't necessary because we already kind of knew the background from the first movie. So there was the things that didn't need to be there. <sighs> it took I, longer to get an the, explosion the, in this than, than they did, it, it did in Captain America. It did. It did. And it, there should be just, if it's, if you... If you're a superhero right. movie, you should have explosions. Any action movie, I want explosions. Like, I don't want to wait any more than a half hour for things to start blowing up. Good, A good action movie, things blow up quickly. Um, I, yeah, I don't disagree I, with that. I mean, I shouldn't have to wait more than a half hour for stuff to start just blowing up. Yeah, it's, oh. It wasn't fair. It wasn't good. It, it was. Wasn't, oh. it, I, I know. I was so disappointed. Like, again, I was heartbroken because I really liked the first Wonder Woman a lot. Um, I thought it was really great, really strong female led. I do like one thing. I do. I will give this movie credit for. I do like that it had a female villain. I love seeing just as much as I love seeing a female hero. I love seeing a female villain too. Then you um, would love Thor Ragnarok. Maybe I don't know. It depends on how long it takes for explosions to happen. That when I'm explosions tired, happen quick, it's the only good Thor. I'm movie. getting so tired of these stupid superhero movies with these two-hour-long bag stories and only a half hour of shit blowing up. Yeah, <laughs> I can forgive Captain America for that more than this. For, I can't. Hold on. Can I finish, please? Yeah. I can forgive Captain America more for this, more for it than this. Because it was the first movie. It was the origin story. They were at least setting up something. They basically yeah, gave you an origin story. Yeah, yeah, this was already set up in the first one. I know. That's a bigger sin but to me. Not, but not just that, but like... I don't know how much backstory we needed of the villains, too. You basically need to know that... I mean... Maxwell Lord is bad. Yeah, we knew Cheetah was like a nerd first, but... Which, I mean, I don't even remember that. I'm kind of mad she didn't die. That's the other thing. I was, I was kind of mad that she didn't die. Like, none of the villains died in this. 
and I was kind of mad about it. And then I gotta wonder now too about Maxwell Lord because then like he like tried to turn good at the end or he did like the right thing. So was he gonna end up staying a villain or like does he end up doing something good? Like what I don't really know because I don't really follow comic books. Not definitely I'm definitely not into nerd culture. Um, what I know about Maxwell Lord, now granted I didn't read Wonder Woman comic books, but it, Maxwell Lord I know is a super villain. He was the main villain of the first season of the Supergirl TV show. Um, and then he disappeared after they moved filming from California to Canada. Um, but why make him turn good or why make him do the right thing? Thing. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, is it, he going to disappear? Is not villain? every villain needs a redemption arc. No, but that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, is he going to stay a villain? Like, why didn't why didn't they just kill him? Well, why didn't he just die? My, here's the thing. I understand if you're trying to make a villain who comes back through multiple movies like the MCU has done with Loki. He is almost everyone's favorite villain to where he's getting his own show on Disney Plus because... People love the trickster, the, the god of mischief. But Maxwell Lord didn't have that built up the way Loki did. Because Loki, they showed, he well, Loki was a god, not a person on top of everything else. So it under, it makes sense why he could die and come back at, at, compared well, to what Maxwell Lord is. Maxwell Lord's a person. I don't, so... I don't get this. I don't know why they didn't kill him. I don't know why they chose to let him live and give him some type of redemption. It doesn't make sense because Maxwell Lord is, he's basically like Lex Luthor is in the Superman universe. He's there and he's always villainous. Even he, he only ever does the right thing to benefit him. Now, is there going to be another one? Another Wonder Woman? Movie? Yes. They've actually already green lighted a third Wonder Woman movie, but with a different plot this time, I hope. I hope, but... Uh. Um, so, I don't know. There was... I have more questions than answers with this one. Also, why 1984? I don't know why they chose 1984. I, like, for a timeline. Like, there's so many other interesting time periods post-World War II. Or was it World War One? World War One. It was yeah. World War One. So, there's so many other interesting time periods that they could have gone to... Um. That I I don't really understand why 1984. Uh, you wouldn't even really consider it like a midway point between World War One and modern times if they're doing a modern. Would it be no, not really. No, no. Uh, midway point would be the 60s. Like the 60s, yeah. I was so gonna say it'd be like you, the 60s. Be like it'd be like, the like the in between. Um, Woodstock. I know. So why wouldn't they come back during? Oh, that see now that would have been interesting like what wonder woman hippie that would have been like a whole other plot line right there we could have put some lsd got got everybody high like on lsd i may have to put explicit on this one listen, your drug references now listen to the grateful dead and like like wonder woman woodstock edition see you know, that would have been great that would have been a fantastic movie um and then she would have just saved woodstock and the world and literally like the music would live on and then we'd be like all we we're saying is give peace a chance by a campfire and everything would be good i would have loved it it'd be great yeah, you okay. can have some it wouldn't follow the comics right i did again <laughs> not a comic i read so i, I don't, don't know. ever read comics so yeah but anyway, um, if anyone knows why we couldn't do Wonder Woman Woodstock Edition, please tell me. Because I think that would be the best thing ever. Um, now, I'm going to reference two things in the movie that I did actually like. Now, if you ever saw the Super Friends cartoon, they always reference Wonder Woman's invisible plane. And it always was always done in such a stupid way because you could see her flying. So what good is an invisible plane if you could see Wonder Woman flying? In this movie, she uses her powers to turn a plane they're flying in invisible to get it off of radar. It makes sense. And it, it's you don't just see her and Steve Trevor flying in the air. It, she They are cloaked because of her powers. They made it make sense. They took a stupid element from the cartoons 
and from the comic books and made it make sense. Uh, so gr good for them for that. I also didn't understand how all of a sudden she could fly. Uh, I'm not really sure. I how, didn't get that one. Either. But I know that's a power she had in the comics. So, But she didn't have that in the first one. Yeah, I don't and know. And then I don't know if you remember at like the very, very end, there was like that little... um. But she doesn't age, so I don't know. But I, it was the the Wonder Woman, like the original Wonder Woman. Made yes, Linda out Carter. The very, yes, yeah. yes, that's what I was going to reference is the other thing that I really liked was the appearance of Linda that. Carter. The original Wonder Woman from the TV show of the 70s makes an appearance as Asteria, the uh, god who's, goddess sorry, who sacrificed herself so that the a Amazons could uh, escape to freedom uh, in, the, uh, in their mythology. You find out that she didn't actually die she was still alive and now is living as yeah. a human that is really cool i really like that um but those are the only two aspects of it that i liked really it took too long to get to stuff and it's a sequel and even like i think they spent a lot of time in the beginning focusing on wonder woman's powers like we already know she's powerful she's freaking wonder woman yeah. Like, like we already know this from the first one, and mm -hmm. I don't know. I just feel like it left way more questions than answers. I wasn't. I was disappointed. I was very, very disappointed. I was very unimpressed. Now let's go to uh, Sarah's segment: snacks with Sarah. So for tonight's snack, I got a little lazy, just like the creators of this movie, and we had cheese puffs and cider boys beer so we kind of like recycled one of our favorite yes one of our favorite beverages just yep. like the plot line in honor of wonder woman we recycled our favorite beverage just like they recycled the plot of the movie yes uh we did a blackberry i had the blackberry uh apple cider one and you had the apple cinnamon cider yes one. i had the apple cinnamon cider it was delicious um again try the cider boys hard cider really good one of our favorite hard ciders and also we had the um i don't know what brand it was i think it was the aldi brand it was the buffalo cheese puffs like yeah so it's like cheese puffs with like a little hint of like hot but they're not as hot as the flaming hot cheetos so i think i like them a little bit better yes i agree i like them a little better i mean they're, i love flaming hot cheetos but they got a nice kick without being too much yeah they're think. like they're like a way more milder version of flaming hot cheetos but i do love my flaming hot cheetos all right, now I'm gonna we're gonna go back and if you follow us on social media, uh, over the pat some of our past episodes we have posted on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram asking for feedback from you guys. So here we go. If right before our Noel thing, we asked if about your favorite and least favorite Christmas movies. Uh, our friends over at the Walt Vault Pod, that's uh, their names are Emily, Luis. Michelle and Andre, they uh, commented that they have differing favorite Christmas movies, but they all agree their least favorite is the Jim Carrey version of A Christmas Carol. And while it's not my least favorite Christmas movie, it is bottom three. It is god awful. I agree with them. And uh, also, my brother Bill commented on it. He said his favorite, he listed his three favorite Christmas movies Christmas Vacation, Home Alone, and Ernest Save Christmas. Says his least favorite are Santa Claus 2 and The Polar Express. Reading that his words were bipolar express, um, which is kind of funny and sarcastic, just like my brother in law, Bill. Yes, very much so. Well, and then also before our Mulan review, we asked what our favorite, our uh, fans' favorite uh, and least favorite live action remakes were. Uh, Sabrina Landry commented that her favorite was Beauty and the Beast. Uh, so anyway, thank you for uh, commenting on our pages and thank you for letting us know. We love interacting with you guys. So, but let's move on now to our rankings, Sarah, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rank Wonder Woman 1984? A negative 1984? No, I can't do that, can I? Um, I'm going to give it like a two. I'm mad that you stole my joke because I was going to say negative 1984. <laughs> uh, Sorry. I didn't even know you were going to do that. Okay. Well, uh, so you're giving it a two. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give it a, I mean, they tried, so I got to give them at least one point for trying. I'm going to give them a one and a half because this was bad. And it's a, it's a sequel to a movie I really liked, which that pisses me off so much. Yeah. We both really, yeah. Um, 
usually sequels, even if the sequel isn't as good as the original, it's usually not this far of a dip. So, um, yeah, I was just disappointed. And I gotta say this. We have to stop. We have to stop this culture. Like, I want a petition. I want signatures. This is going to go around. We have to, first of all, stop making movies that are two and a half hours long. Because there's no reason whatsoever to do that. Second of all, we have to stop making action movies with an hour-long backstory. This has to end in movie culture. It's not fair to the audience. It's wrong. It's upsetting, and it's wrong, and it's hurtful, and it's not necessary, and it's a waste of time. It's a waste of production. It's a waste of energy for everybody. Gotta stop. We gotta cancel this. This has to end. In 2021 and 2022, movies that are two and a half hours long needs to stop, and an hour-long backstory gotta go. Let's just get in there, make the movie, get to the point, end it. So we're going to end on Sarah's rant right there. That is going to be the uh, end of this episode of I Watched It With My Wife. Please, uh, con uh, you can find us on our website, withmywifepod.com. Uh, we are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All I Watched It With My Wife. Um, you can reach us by email, withmywifepod uh, at gmail.com. And we are also on Anchor. Thank you for listening. Also, real quick, if you go on withmywifepod.com, I will be drawing up the petition tonight to make movies end at two and a half hours. No movies, two and a half hours. One and a half hours tops. Just oh. kidding. That won't be on there. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye.